All right, so this is what's going on with the training. I'm going to continue to sail until the end of the month, and we're getting ready to add velocity banking, mega banking, the man program into the training. And essentially, what we're going to do is offer free credit repair. Everyone that signs up who needs free credit repair, we're going to give that. And the links will be below. So you can go ahead and check that out and get into the programs because the sale will continue until the end of the month. And there's a one payment or you can get in on the payment plan. That link is below. So we got a lot of stuff that we're getting ready to get into. You know, I've been noticing something that when I go to my favorite restaurants or when I go hang out, I notice that I never have a problem getting in. During the pandemic, one of my favorite places, I would have to go ahead, reserve on the app an hour to an hour and a half to get in. Now, I've tested it. I've gone in the morning. I've gone in mid afternoon. I've gone just before their close. I've never had a problem getting in. And I also notice that traffic on the roads is nowhere near as thick. One of the things that I enjoyed during the pandemic was the highways were not crowded. They were pretty free. And I'm beginning to see some of that again. So what does this mean? The real economy is going to make people cry. Um, what I believe is going to happen is we're going to have a massive roll of layoffs and this roll of layoffs is going to come because the economy is shrinking right now. Dodge is having a terrible time trying to sell the Hellcat. Um, I went to four dealerships and they're loaded with Hellcats. Now, why do I bring this up? Remember Omni and the Hellcat? These are cars that people love. They want to have them. And right now, they're just sitting on the lot. Also, they're the most highly stolen car, which is also part of the economy that will make people cry. Um, one of the things that is happening is we're kind of being braced for the big letdown that's coming because right now in the last video talking about um, crime, crime is past stupid. Crime is incredible right now. And once we have these layoffs and these layoffs hit, crime is going to go up. And the number of women who will be turning to OnlyFans, the number of women who will be turning to escorts is going to dramatically increase. It's going to dramatically increase because, you know, we, we've kind of had this conversation before. I said during the pandemic, it would have been better to let all of the bad things happen because when the government instilled this six trillion into the economy and everybody had money, uh, people were getting enhanced unemployment, people were getting direct stimulus payments, the loans, this created a frenzy. And it also created something that I find to be really interesting. Right now, there's a bunch of companies that want their employees to come back to the office. And these employees are drunk on that work from home freedom. They don't want to come back to the office. They don't want to do anything. And this is right here is going to be the impetus for a lot of layoffs. We want you to come back to the office five days a week. Uh, I don't feel like I'm back to the office. I'm going to try to find me another work remote job. OK, laid off, laid off or what they're going to do. And this is something that they're going to be talking about in these work working YouTube channels. A lot of people are going to fire themselves. See, the company is going to say, we want you to come back to the office and the employee is like, I don't want to do it. And the company is going to say, all right, you just fired yourself. You just quit. That's what the company is going to say. And this is going to disrupt their unemployment. I mean, we haven't even begun to see the things that are coming. A lot of people are going to really find themselves in harm's way. Um, 
you 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 think you know because one of the things i saw i was watching a youtube video and this guy he, he, i thought he was hilarious in this video this guy talked about he just bought a boat and then he goes on and talks about how the economy is hard for him the economy is hard for the average person he 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 really put himself in line with being a normal hard-working person but this guy just bought a boat lives in a million dollar house owns a car dealership and i was just sitting there like oh okay this guy understands what's coming see he's trying to wet himself because one of his his biggest mistake in that video was saying that he just bought a boat which means he has good credit he should have never said that and i think his video would have been more because anyone like me who's like reading between the lines and this is something else too this guy has a pretty successful youtube channel probably makes 10 15 20 000 a month from that never talks about it never talks about it and this is one of the reasons that i'm about to go somewhat undercover um because the crime is getting stupid and i remember during the pandemic there were people breaking in to people's houses on north side drive there was a lot of things that was happening right a lot of things that were happening and in this new economy there are people right now who are sitting who feel that they're perfectly fine they feel that they got a good job. You know, they're they're tussling with their employer about going back to the office. They don't want to go back to the office. In the next 12 months, this person will find themselves unemployed. They will find themselves. And this is what this is coming. This is going to be a big issue. A lot of people will quit their jobs without intentionally saying, I quit. The company's going to put out a directive saying, hey, we need you to come back in the office. And everyone that doesn't come back to the office, we will consider that you have quit. Notice how that language works. We want you to come back to the office. But if you don't come back to the office, we will consider that you have resigned. They're not going to fire you. They're going to let your actions dictate what happens to your employment. Because right now I know someone. And I, I haven't talked to her in a while, and she is the poster child from the work at home movement. Um, she gets up at six to let her dog out. Then she does some work. Then at 12 o'clock, she takes a nap. Then at three o'clock, she goes to the gym. Now, if she had to drive to her workplace and work in the office, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be possible. It just wouldn't be possible. So she is the perfect prototype for the work at home working remote person and unfortunately well fortunately for her if she wanted to go freelance she could make more money so even if her job got rid of her she has options because she makes one hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year but that's not going to be most people many people are going to find themselves in a situation where they're going to get let go and then it's going to be really, really challenging to find a job. Like right now, unemployment is at an all time low. It's like three point eight percent. That's unemployment. Right. This hiding these numbers, because one of the reasons that unemployment is so low is you have a lot of low wage jobs that people are jumping into. Because, you know, one of the things I looked at with DoorDash, there's like if you don't believe me, check it out. There's a ton of doordash channels talking about how to make fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars a week delivering food now if you're willing to work 10 to 12 hour shifts and work seven days a week you can make fifteen hundred two thousand a week this is valid because one of the things that doesn't happen with a job is you cannot get all the hours you want with doordash instacart all these gig apps you can work as much as you want because they're they're not paying you a salary and there's no overtime. So if you happen to work seven days a week, they don't pay you overtime. They just pay you the standard rate. So it's it's a great opportunity for people who really, really want to hustle. And one of the things that you're seeing, like um, I have noticed that so much is going on, like once again, with my building. There's a number of people who are moving out, a 
ton of people are moving out and they're not moving out because I'm moving. I'm getting out of here. And one of the reasons I'm getting out of here is I need more space. And one of the things that is happening is a lot of people are moving. They're getting out of here. They're rolling out to find cheaper accommodations. And this is one of the things. And I will tell you, um, when I got my renewal notice, because I put in because I knew I was leaving. Um, I'll share a story with you. The beginning of the year. I was in the process of attempting to buy like a three million dollar condo. Right. And the terms got really, really strange and stuff. And this is when I began to research the condo market. Condos and high rises do not appreciate like a traditional house and townhouses. They do appreciate more than condos. But I started to do some research and I found a lot of people selling their condos for maybe they had been in 15, 20 years selling it for maybe 100,000 more than they paid for. And I was like, Ugh. so this is one of the reasons I backed out of that deal. But I knew that I'd be leaving here because, like I said, I need more room to work and do things. But a lot of the people that I'm running into are there. They're leaving. Talk to them, you know, because the uh, other day I was on the elevator and I had got some moving boxes, like moving boxes. And I had, everyone asked me, so, and this was the question. So what reason are you leaving? That was the question because there, there's been a lot of issues and stuff here. And I'm like, I just need more space, you know, and I like, I just go in here and I was like to get the kind of space that I want in a condo. I'm looking at two to three million. And then also I'm looking at the high monthly association fee. The place I was looking at, the the place I was looking at, I found this out later. The monthly association fee was twenty five hundred dollars on top of all the other costs. And I was just like, all right. And, you know, I, I have this way of convincing myself is this is a good direction because I was like, you go ahead and move into this place. You're going to have some amazing views. You're going to have some nice stuff. But after I sat down and I put pen to paper and I really looked at it, I was like thirty thousand dollars a year in association fees that are going to go up. And then the other and also there, there were so many other little things and then. Me and my real estate agent, we had a deep conversation and my real estate agent was like, you may be trying to move into a foreclosure because the, the guy wanted like a lot of money down and he was going to work the deal. And, you know, it just didn't seem palatable. And this guy was a doctor. This guy was a doctor and he had found himself in financial trouble. And one of the things that's going to happen is and I don't think this is going to be like a slow process. It's going to be bam. It's going to be bam. The, the people are going to find themselves in these positions and having to actually do this. Because like right now, and once again, even with all of this, even with the layoffs, the firings, all these other things that are coming, the price of real estate is not going to go down. It's just not. And one of the things is. I had to look, I had to look, I had to do research to find the deal that I did. And it, it really, really worked out well for me. But one of the things that is going to happen is you're going to see people out here who are going to be struggling. They're going to be really, really struggling. They're going to be um, doing a lot of of different things to make it. And once these massive layoffs and firings start to happen, because I don't think it's going to be like a bit by bit, because when a lot of people in the tech industry got laid off, that was big news. But this is going to be bigger because what do we know? We know that trucking is going through a crisis. We know tech layoffs are going through a crisis. And we know that the average American, and let's talk about this, the average American doesn't have enough financial resources to buy the average house, which I think the average house price is 420,000. And with average household income being like 71, that's 
two people working and, you know, they simply don't have enough money to buy these houses because um, you would have to be putting down like conventional 20 percent. That's eighty thousand dollars. It's eighty thousand dollars. And, you know, if they were to go FHA, they can get away with like three point five percent, which would be 15, maybe 20,000. And one of the things that I saw, and this is what I saw in the real estate market, that properties that were highly desirable went quick and properties that had issues stayed on the market. And I've noticed this because um, one of the things that I consistently see is a lot of people have no concept of who's going to buy their property. They have no concept of who has the ability to buy their property. And this is one of the reasons, and this is one of the reasons, uh, cause I don't do it anymore, but these failed Airbnbs, that thinking that someone who makes three, $400,000 a year is gonna spend eight to $10,000 to rent a regular house in a regular neighborhood. And this is another reason that I am getting out of Buckhead. Buckhead is very much the ghetto, very much so the ghetto. And you have a lot of people who live in this ghetto who have money. They have money. They have access. They have incomes. They have highly lucrative careers. But they're still with that ghetto mindset. They still have that ghetto mindset. And I've noticed because uh one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is to insulate myself because, like I said, um, in that video, I'm not sharing nowhere near as much stuff as I used to. And I've been really, really careful to um, insulate myself in my new residence where you can't go to Google and search out where I live. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this is Crime is going to be beyond stupid. Actually, it kind of crossed my mind that I, I might sell my Porsche. Uh, I can sell it for about 30,000 more than I pay for because it, it only has 4,000 miles. And I, I kind of thought about that and I was like, sell a Porsche, sell a BMW, get a regular car. Because that Porsche, uh, I, like I've had three. This is my this is my fifth Porsche. I had two SUVs and three cars. I have never had so many people stop me and talk about that car. I mean, it is a constant attention getter. And this is like, OK, do I do I sell the Porsche? Because this car is bringing me a ton of attention, a ton of attention. And I'm sitting there like more than likely, I probably won't sell it because I like it so much. But one of the things that you as a successful person will have to do is watch your six. You're going to have to be looking over your shoulder. You're going to have to be really careful because one of the things I have noticed and I was having a conversation with a lady who lives here and she had parked her car and someone parked next to her so close that she had to get into her car on the passenger side. And then when she got pissed off and went around she saw the vehicle had been shot up someone parked a vehicle that had been shot up next to her car and she doesn't know what happened everything she reported it to management but i'm just sitting there thinking you know especially with buckhead uh one of the reasons i'm getting out of here is the city is loud the city is so loud there's always something happening. Stuff goes off in the middle of the morning. Uh, neighbors are having very loud conversations in the hallway. I mean, I'm just sitting here like, and this is part of the things that is happening with the situation here in America. Um, we have, this is the beginning before it gets really, really bad it's really 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 bad because one of the things i have noticed is that number one people don't want to work that's that's a given 
Everyone is looking to be an influencer. Have you noticed how many brand new YouTube channels are here on YouTube? Have you noticed that there are literally a ton of brand new YouTube channels and everyone's trying to make their mark? Now, a friend of mine, Roberto Blake, he put out a video. There's 110 million YouTube channels, right? But only 10 million have a thousand or more subscribers. Only 10 million. So if you get a YouTube channel and you have 10,000 subscribers and you get really consecutive views, you're in the top 1% of YouTubers. And where the strange money is, is in that top 0.2%. That top 0.2%. There's only like 32,000 million subscriber YouTube channel. Oh, and this thing. And this is something else. Roberto's really good for this. There's only like 50 some thousand YouTube channels in America that have six over six uh, 100,000 subscribers in America. Because when you look at these YouTube numbers, they're from around the globe. They're in Germany, London, India, Mexico, wherever. And it is really, really interesting because everyone is trying to get to this, you know, so-called easy YouTube money. And uh, I've been doing this 15 years. And there are many people who are about to get a very rude awakening because what's going to happen is you're going to need skills. You're going to have to take a course to be really to do well in YouTube. You're going to have to take a course because there's so much you know, with YouTube that you don't know that you just start a YouTube channel and you just start putting out videos. And, you know, next thing you know, three years later, you don't even have a thousand subscribers and you're like, what's going on? So one of the things that I see with this economy is everyone is trying to start some kind of online business. But here's the thing with that. And this is something that I know for a fact. Before I came to YouTube, I've had a few businesses that were successful before YouTube. And then when I came to YouTube, I turned YouTube into a successful business, not because I have all of these special YouTube skills that had nothing to do with it. I had business skills that had a lot that had everything to do with it. Everything. I mean, seriously, my first three years on YouTube and I made a million dollars from selling a book. So YouTube is full of possibilities for the people who are skilled and trained. And one of the things that we will see during this pandemic and next year's an election year this is going to be wild and i'm going to make a prediction here if the economy does what i think it's going to do biden will not win re-election trump will win in or oddly enough and this has never happened before robert kennedy jr will become our first independently running candidate to become president if the economy turns like I think it's going to turn because this this is one of the things that's going to kill Biden, because remember that we're going to fix your student loans. Uh, that didn't really work. That didn't really work. And people are looking for economic relief. They're looking for help with their bills. And this is something that's really, really interesting. And I'm about to start talking about race. There's a lady here on YouTube by the name of Fantastic Finances. And this this is this is really interesting. And what she talks about is velocity banking, right? There's been one, two, three, four black content creators who've been talking about velocity banking for years, right? Well, this woman started her channel not a year. I don't even think her channel's a year ago, a year old. 120, 3,000 subscribers, a million views per month because, you know, they're, they're, like I said, there have been black content creators making the same content, talking about the same principles. And she's a little sweet Southern Christian lady up in Tennessee and literally people love her. And she's talking about the same exact principles that the black content creators have been talking about for years, for years. And it, it's kind of funny because here's one of the things that will mess you up with YouTube if you're a black content creator. 
and I, I have actual proof of this. I have a YouTube channel that I created where I hid my identity. And the YouTube recommendations were totally different than the recommendations that I get when I show my identity. And it just kind of blew my mind. It just blew my mind because YouTube will recommend black content to black people. And I will say this, it will recommend some of the most foolish stuff in the world to you. And it will not recommend high level white content creators. It won't. And this is one of the reasons that if you're going to do YouTube, you need to take a course. <laughs> you need to you need to get yourself some education because um, one of the things that happened with me, because I've had multiple channels and I've had channels, uh, this one and the channel that used to be Savage Finance. Those were my two most successful channels. And if I wasn't getting a recommended to a black audience, Savage Finance would have blew up with the blue up. But because YouTube was setting itself to recommend me to black folks and not high level, it, it was recommending me to black folks who were broke. And that right there is really interesting because once I get, I'll go back to my storage auction book, 98% of my content, 98% of my audience was white when I was talking about storage auctions because you know, and I knew this from fact, when I was in the storage auction business, there wasn't that many black folks out there. There was like literally a handful. If there was 30 people in the auction, maybe three or four would be black and the rest would be white. So I have no clue to what's going on now. But I do know that during this great upheaval, during this great meltdown, race is going to be a very big part of it. It's going to be a huge part of it. And this is one of the reasons that I am making the decisions that I am making on keeping my privacy, because one of the things that I have noticed is if you are doing well, and this is in the TikTok videos, there's a hate. There's hate for you if you've done well. And this is why this guy who was talking about, you know, I'm just like you, even though I just bought a boat because <laughs> he's trying to align himself. And in the comment section, there was someone I used to hate you. But until I saw this video, you 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 relate to me. And I was just sitting there like, oh, it's working. It's working. It is really, really working because once these things start to hit once these things really, really start to hit, I think crime is going to be beyond ridiculous. Now, crime right now, crime is stupid at the moment. Crime is stupid at the moment. And what we're going to see as we get deeper into this is crime is going to escalate. And like when I had the car rental business and, you know, Sandy Springs police called me and told me we're not going to investigate any more of your stolen cars. That right there was a message to me. And that day I shut down the car rental business. I stopped renting cars that day because I knew what was going to happen. And one of the things that, you know, and this this was before now, I had a lady who stole my Range Rover and I asked her where it was. And she said, I left it at Town Center Mall. I went up to the town center, couldn't find it. And she's like, oh, it got towed. And I was like, well, who towed it? And she said, I don't know. And then it just kept going on and on. And this is what's funny. I got a message in my email box talking about this vehicle that the insurance company had already. I, and once again, I paid 15000 for that Range Rover and the insurance company gave me close to fourteen. So that was a good deal for me. And when they called me, I just ignored it because I was like, I don't have the title because one of the things I had to do was I had to send the title in to the insurance company. So I was like, I just left it. I don't know what happened to it. So maybe someone got a bonded title. I, I have no clue. But this is stuff that was happening before now. This was stuff that was happening. And I can only imagine what's going on out there. I can only imagine the hustles and the scams and all of these things that are going on right now that people are doing to survive and to make it. So once again, 
get ready. You're going to see a massive, massive job loss situation in the next 12 months. And it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be crazy and sad to say a lot of you who are watching this are going to be impacted by this. This is something that's coming because I can just see it with my daily activities. And when I go out and I just look, I can just see it. It's coming. And it's not going to be kind and it's going to make grown people cry. And the homeless population is going to dramatically increase in the middle of winter. The homeless population is about to explode. And this is one of the reasons that like I'm checking my six. I'm really thinking about stuff in the manner that I didn't used to think about. I'm really, really just looking at this whole Thing very very differently very very differently so you know I'm about to do some a whole lot different so just be ready for that just be ready for that all right so we got some new training and this is some I've saw a lot of people had problems putting together their holding company so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to put your holding company together and some other stuff we got a lot of stuff that's going to roll out probably November and I'm going to continue the sale. So you can hit that link below and get in on the sale deal. And we got a lot that is going to happen with the training, with the man program and some other stuff. So be on the lookout for that.